Hey guys, what's going on? Michael White here, your favorite self-taught developer, and today we're going to be talking about planning out projects as a beginner. Now, I'm sure you guys have all heard it a thousand times, failing to plan is planning to fail, right? Well, when you're a beginner and you're just starting to learn to code, it's not that simple. Let's take something simple like planning out a work day. You know the night before to set your alarm clock so you can wake up on time. Morning rolls around, you wake up, you do your morning stuff, you get in the car, you drive to work, you get to work, you make sure you got your coffee and your headphones on so nobody bugs you for the next few hours, and you're cruising, right? You're just cruising. So that's how planning's supposed to work. Now, when you're a beginner learning how to code, planning's a little more like this. You still set your alarm clock the night before, right? You wake up on time. Good job. Step one, right? After that, you get in the car to go to work, and you realize that you don't know how to drive. Well, by some miracle, you manage to teach yourself how to drive, and then you realize that you don't know where to go. Well, a couple hours passes by, <laughs> you open up Google Maps, and you made it to the office. But now you forgot your headphones and your coffee, and everybody wants to talk to you today. That's how planning goes when you're a beginner. Planning front to back just doesn't work. When you're a beginner to coding, there's just so much that you don't know that you can't account for. And it's very difficult to plan things in a way that they can embrace the unknown. When I first started coding, I was always the guy jumping in headfirst into the code, just, just starting. Like, what was planning going to do? Every time I tried to plan, it failed. I'd always come across something I just didn't know how to do, and I'd have to go spend, you know, an hour or two trying to figure out what's going on, then come back to the project, and it was just constant just a battle the entire time. Eventually I came up with a system and that's what I wanna share with you guys today. My system for planning projects as a beginner and embracing the unknown. So there's four steps to a good plan. The first thing you gotta take into account is what is the end goal? What are you trying to accomplish? What are you trying to do? If you don't know that, nothing's gonna get done, right? But knowing what you're gonna do, that's your North Star, baby. Follow that home. That's gonna guide you along the way and light the path. It's also gonna keep you from going left and doing a whole bunch of stuff you don't need to be doing or shouldn't be doing yet. So whenever you're starting a new project, answer that question first and then keep it at the forefront. I like to write things down like that. I got my handy dandy notebook here, if you guys can see. So what good is telling you guys all this without a real example? So I started a toy project called The Pet Book, which is a social media clone using pets. It's nothing but a for fun project, don't worry guys. If any of you guys can turn it into a million dollar idea, by the way, hey, throw some love my way. I'd love to work on it. But uh, on my notebook here, I drew out what I wanted it to do. This was my North Star, right? Can you guys see that? Oh yeah, it showed up pretty nice, huh? I'm old school, I like pencil and notebook paper. But it says, have user log in with Google, be able to post pictures with text, be able to add friends, be able to comment, and be able to view friends post. So all in all, super simple. That's what I wanted it to do. A community of pets, or really their owners, not because pets ain't doing that, <laughs> right? But that was my North Star. That was my goal. That's what I wanted to accomplish. I wrote that down, and throughout the process, I always had that there kind of, you know, pushing me along. Step two, sketch a draft of what you want the project to look like. Now, this sketch doesn't have to be perfect, but you got to get all the elements that you know you want in, in, right? So let me show you guys the sketch I drew up for the pet book on a website called Figma. So if you guys don't know about Figma, it's a really cool website. It's very simple to use. It lets you draw up mocks for web pages and put in whatever you want. You can be as detailed or as simple as you want to be in this, and it's completely free. My mock-ups are all very simple like this one. <laughs> all right, I'm not a guy that spends a lot of time making mock-ups, but here you have my pet book, right? Now, I put in a little thought about how I wanted it to work, right? I knew I wanted users to be able to log in, so I wanted them to be able to log in on the nav bar up here, right? So I had their username display here if they're logged in, and then a sign in button here so they can get signed in. Now as the project becomes more complex, you know this is gonna change, right? So that's something to take note of later. Already, I know to start thinking about, well, what happens if they're not signed in, and what happens if they don't have a user account? That's already a problem that I know I need to solve now. Okay, it gets you thinking. And then I thought about how I wanted the data to flow through the project, right? Well, where are they gonna submit their pictures? How are they gonna submit their comments and their post? So I made a little submission box. This is how the data is gonna get input into the program here. Right, their submission goes here in a preview. Again, my, <laughs> my sketch skills are amazing, right? This is the best mock-up you guys will ever see. But attachable media goes here, and then there's a submit button, and then here you see the other users uploads and post, and that's the home page. That's where you're gonna land first. So this is like the core, the backbone of my project. This is where the information is gonna get put in and displayed, and how you get logged into the website, right? 
And then secondly, I made the profiles. So once you're logged in and you click on somebody's profile, you'll see their profile picture here, background picture here. I was gonna have like um, info here, you know, like what kind of pet they are, fun facts, and then their bio here. Again, I didn't sketch out anything too complicated, nothing too fancy. It's just enough for me to know what's going on and to have something to build towards, which is huge. And the more thought you put into it, the more you're going to get out of it. Like already, I've come across a bunch of problems that I need to figure out how to solve. I need to know how to upload a photo to a database. I need to know how to log in, how to display those pictures from the database. And any of these things that I come across that I don't know, I write them down. As you guys can see here on my handy dandy notebook, things to learn, authentication need to what's that say enable loading pictures to firebase and then pull those pictures and display them so i was learning as i went writing things down that i didn't know i gained tons of valuable information just from sketching that out and have a much better idea of what to do next step three you're going to explain how your project works in plain english so imagine you're giving somebody a tour of a house right you start at the front door hey this is my front door you want to go in and then once you go into the front door, you're like, okay, this room immediately to our left is the living room. Um, this poster right here is from Fully Cooley and you know, yada, yada, yada. Take the same approach with this step. You start on the home page. Okay, hey guys, here's my home page. The home page is gonna display X, Y, Z. And then up here we have the nav bar where you can log in and see if you're logged in. And then if you click on this button right here, this window will open up and either let you sign in or create an account and kind of walk through your whole entire project step by step, just like you're giving a house tour. And you can either write or at least just think about what your program is going to be doing in plain English. Again, the more detail you can put in here, the more it's going to help you out. And be sure that if you have data flowing through your application, that you're knowing where it's coming in and how it's getting displayed, okay? Make sure you understand how the data flows within your application. That's very important. And then finally, step four, convert your plain text to code. So I don't mean go through your notebook and write out a bunch of code. No, what you gotta do here when you're converting your plain text to code, if you know how to code something, just think about how it's gonna look on the page, right? Think about how you're gonna make the home page, how everything's gonna fall in. And then if there's something that you're not sure how to code, this is when you put in the time and go research it now. This is when you learn how to use Firebase, how to upload pictures or do user authentication. Whatever it is you need to learn, this is when you learn how to code that, as well as think about how everything else is gonna be coded and how it's all gonna to fit together, right? Because at the end of the day, it's all gotta fit together and flow. This is when you think about that. Well, if I click on this button, what code needs to execute so it pops up this window and sends the data here? This is where you put all that into play, okay? The simpler stuff, you don't need to worry about too much, but when things start interacting with each other and becoming more intertwined, Think about how that code's gonna work together. And if there's still something you're really uncomfortable with or something you don't know how to code, take a step back, build a small project working on whatever it was that was giving you a hard time. It doesn't have to be anything too complex, just enough to get your hands dirty and get a feel for how it works. And then you'll be better equipped using it in your own project. And then once you have an idea of how everything works full circle, right? How the whole project's gonna flow, how everything's gonna fall into place, that's when you start. And this is just how I like to approach things, guys. This isn't like, the cut and dry best way ever it might not even be the best way for you but hey if my approach can help you out and make the planning process easier when you're a beginner then i think that's pretty cool so i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up there do thank you guys for watching all the way here if you did and if you guys haven't already do join the discord we got a pretty cool community growing already and we're gonna be cooking up some cool stuff here pretty soon i'll have a link to that below as well and yeah i think that's it i'll see you guys in the next one all right peace Bye. Bye. Bye.